Okay, start it. Okay, so since we are starting the recording now, I'm just going to repeat uh, what I was saying earlier. Um, so what I wanted to focus on mainly today is uh, the planning for uh, the agenda of this group. So as of last week, we left off at a point where uh, we all were uh, more or less comfortable with the overall design of COSY. Uh, we hashed out issues around uh, um, deletion of buckets and how uh, buckets, bucket deletion will behave if a pod is using that bucket. Um, and after that discussion, we uh, went into uh, discussing what are the steps for merging the cap and, and what are the open questions left uh, on that. Uh, one of the things that was brought up was uh, we, can, we can take the cap forward in one of two forms. Uh, one is called the uh, provisional uh, cap. Uh, in this, in, uh, when a cap is, uh, uh, you know, taken forward in, in the provisional sense, um, the timeline uh, looks very different from the uh, the other uh, form of uh, uh, cap approval, which is uh, the implementable cap. So, uh, I just wanted to lay out the timeline and and make a decision uh, on on whether we should go the provisional route or the implementable route. Uh, it's it's an open question, and and uh, based on based on what everyone thinks, and based on what will be best for this group, uh, I, I want I want to together decide how to take this forward. So the if we're going the provisional route, um, we can we can start with the cap review right now, uh, in the sense the larger community can start looking at it, giving comments and and. Uh, uh, going, uh, you know, making changes or, or requesting changes as needed. Assuming, um, because the overall design is more or less agreed upon, um, assuming in one or two weeks, we actually go through uh, the merging of the cap, we can start contributing to the official repos right away. Um, and I think it's, it's a very important step uh, where when we can start contributing to the official repos. Uh, one, it introduces uh, a, a rigorous process of review uh, instead of us uh, contributing code on our own private repos. Uh, two, uh, the, the people who review it are, are going to stay more or less consistent. So uh, the code quality is going to uh, remain consistent as well. Um, and and it also brings visibility into the project. I mean, the the uh, everyone else who's interested in the project will easily be able to find out where this project resides and get some visibility into what's going on. And then, as soon as we start contributing to official repos, I think we can start aiming for alpha. Uh, and and when we start aiming for alpha, um, that at that point we'll be taking the cap from this provisional form. To the next form, which is the implementable. Assuming we actually started with the, uh, trying to merge the cap as an impl uh, implementable one, uh, we'd have to start with the API review right away. Now, as per my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the API approval process can take a few months. Uh, given people's uh, uh, availability and uh, uh, and also considering that uh, uh, this is the first time we're going through an API review, uh, I think two to three months uh, is a reasonable estimate. Uh, but there might be some of you here who've done this before and have a better estimate. If so, please uh, let us know. Once approval is done, uh, we go through the same merge and uh, uh, review process. And right after that, we can start contributing to official repos. Um, if I've gotten anything wrong here, please do let me know. Um, so, so this is what it looks like going uh, either provisional or, or implementable. Uh, regardless of how we go, my estimate is it's going to be version 121 when we can actually have the alpha release. Given this, uh, my inclination is actually to go forward and uh, go the provisional route. 
Um, as of last week, we still had an open question about this, but I want to get your thoughts on uh, what do you think about that? So, so you think provisional will, will be faster, but even if we do that, it's still going to be 121 before we hit alpha? Uh, yes. Provisional will be faster to start contributing to official repos. But is it faster to get done? Because for to reach mm -hmm. alpha, you have to go through the API review. So, I mean, we, mm -hmm. yeah, so no matter which way you go, uh, if you want to do alpha, then you have to go through that long process of API review. And also, um, I've seen that with uh, a cap so big, so complicated, um, you may not get a approval just in one release. Does, so, doesn't it seems to me that having code that works would help with the API review because you could, yeah, yeah, it, um, it, it might speed things up even. Yeah, yeah, right. it would, it would. So, it's better to have uh, actually. So, uh, are you saying we could maybe even hit 120 if we go this route? Uh, we think it's a, if you look at the timeline, it's, it's like one less than one month, one month. That's basically you need to get this one uh, reviewed by API reviewers and uh, approved, merged. Uh, we could try, but I think it's uh, it's tough. I just look at the you know the time, look at when mm -hmm. when that is right. Yeah, October six is like is, is October sixth is the enhancement freeze, and uh, November twelfth is the code freeze. So. Mm -hmm. I think code freeze, we have more time actually because this is auto tree. Right. So we can actually do this uh, code freeze. We can do this after November 12th. But I think the, the cap freeze, that, that deadline, October 6th, that's very soon. It's mm -hmm. roughly one month, actually a little bit less than one month. So um, yeah, it, it will usually takes pretty long for the API review to go through for something so so big. And that and that um, API review gates the cap review. So like the API review would have to be done by October sixth to him. Approve not just review, oh. but they have to approve it. Yeah, they have to look good. Yeah, that, to that me doesn't seem it. that doesn't seem likely. So yeah, it's no matter what we do. Yeah, take long, <laughs> very long iterations, right, to go through that. Um, right. I think um I think we on the on the you know core cap team are assuming that a provisional approval of the cap and the ability to use official repos will encourage contribution and will, as has been suggested, uh, make the API review that we need um, down the road uh, happen a little quicker uh, because we'll have working code. Um, so we can show them our structures and the API and so forth schema and, 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 ha and know that it, it works. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just unfortunate that like best case would still be one twenty one, which is right. a long but, way. Uh, out. But still, if you try to do what's the most expedient, um, at what's not compromising quality, we can go provisional coding contribution API. You know, in parallel, get this API review going. Mm -hmm. uh, iterations probably based on the API review and then shoot for an alpha. Or we can do the API review now, get that set up. We have just the couple of people coding um, and um, not in official repos and try to go straight for a alpha or implementable approval of the cap. We're proposing the former. Is there any input to say the second way would be better, faster, more proper, something like that? The one thing is having code for uh, API review, I would rather have code in, uh, you know, that's gone through a, a proper review process that is uh, whose quality is checked uh, for every commit or every uh, pull request. Um, and, and I think it will also give more confidence to people that are reviewing the code uh, rather than having it uh, outside of Kubernetes. When we have it inside uh, the official repos, you know, the, the structure to how the code gets uh, into the repo. And I think that that'll help a lot with the API reviews as well. Yeah, I agree. I think, I mean, what would be the, the downfall of going the provisional route? Like what could it cause a, I mean, there has to be some reason why you wouldn't want to go that direction. Mm -hmm. 
like we would get to write a bunch of code. I guess that's the risk, right? You'd write a bunch of code, go to the API review, and they'd say, we're never going to approve this. Is that the risk? Yeah, I think it's exactly what Sid said, which is, uh, you know, you can, when you're getting code merged into these repos while it's provisional, effectively it's a POC and, you know, it hasn't gotten gone through the official review process. Um, and so every commit is kind of just, you know, we think it's cool, uh, but it hasn't gone through like an official review process. I guess yeah, that's it, the drawback of doing it, provisional. Well, and, and I think the reason you would want to go with implementable is if you had a relatively small change, it's a faster path to, to completion. If your change was small enough that you could just get the API review done up front. But if, if not, then provisional seems like the better way based on the way you've described it. Yeah, it seems to me. I so, so, yeah. I, I think uh, provisional does seem like the better approach. Sa Saad, you mentioned that. Uh, um, so, what if what if we're the ones that are actually reviewing the code, uh, in the sense that what if we had some members from? Well, it's it'll be in the Kubernetes official repos. So when whenever a pull request is made, if some of us are the ones that are that are actually uh, reviewing the code and and getting it merged into the official repos, would it still uh, uh, be considered, you know, we think it's cool type of code? Uh, I think technically, yes, because we haven't gone through official API review. Nobody within this group is an official API reviewer. I see. Um, so there is that. But I, I you know, I, I don't disagree that this might be the better approach. I'm just uh -huh. calling out uh, the issue. Okay. So, uh... Knowing that, knowing that upfront, that that there is a possibility that we'll have to change um, the API, maybe even entirely, uh, likely not, but you know, not throwing that possibility out. Um, if we all know that, and if we go in with that mindset, I think uh, you know the mindset where we're open for change, we're we're ready to come back to the drawing board if needed and and fix it. Um, would would that be okay to go provisional? I have no concerns with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, let's. So I think. Let's... Uh, I mean, one thing is, it, you know, will we have to be open to changing it in the future if API reviewers ask? And the second is uh, accepting that the timeline is uh, looking like it will be at least one twenty one for an alpha, which mm -hmm. both of which I'm okay with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's go with the provisional approach. Um, so uh, let me ask uh, Srini and Jeff, uh, what's the status of the cap now? Do we have everything needed for uh, the provisional uh, approach? I'm sense of some, it's not the, it's not the typical workflow i don't know what's needed for provisional that's what we're i mean i think that's kind of we have sod shing um on the call and and i think we need their guidance on what are the requirements for provisional so we can merge the cap provisionally as per my understanding it's a it's a pretty uh a well understood uh, requirement right for, for provisional um shing uh uh, Are the requirements for provisional um, understood? Like it's, it's not like uh, I think for unknown, provisional, right? you don't. I don't think you have to fill out all of those. Uh, you know, uh, the, what production readiness, those type of things. Right. I think it's mainly just if we <laughs> agree with the design, then probably it's fine. You know. It's okay. Just to address okay. all the comments and making sure there's no major <laughs> objections. Exactly. When when the review happens, if mm -hmm. there is code available, is that taken into account in the review? Uh, are you talking about review of the cap? API. Uh, yes. API review. No, no I think it'll about. certainly bolster. I guess you're talking about the API review. Uh, yes. It will certainly bolster the case, right? You can, when somebody has a question about an API, when you have something concrete to point to. 
it becomes easier to, to make an argument rather than a hypothetical. Right. That seems so right. that would be one advantage of going into that step with code already written. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. You know, higher stakes, but more likely to be able to get through. Mm -hmm. At this point, the cap seems to be, we have addressed all the questions that are raised on the cap. So uh, on the concerns that we discussed last Last week, so it should be ready for uh, final review. Yeah. All right. So let's let's aim for that. So uh, I guess uh, what I would uh, request all of you is uh, please take take some time uh, this week to uh, go over the cap. Um, if you if you get a chance to you know even if you're just looking at the parts that are most relevant to you or most interesting to you, um, the combination of all reviews will cover the entire cap. Um, so was someone saying something? I can hear a faint voice. No. Okay. So, uh, if, uh, if, if you take some time and, and leave us your comments, um, that'll help a lot. And, and, uh, we can, we can start moving forward with, uh, uh with the next steps, uh, quickly. And you know we'll we'll go through the uh, review on merge hopefully in the next few weeks, and and we can start pushing code into the uh, official repos and and uh, have all of you review the code and follow it as we as we move forward. So that's that's my request from all of you. Um, so today my main agenda was the planning. Um, I, I wanted to simply only focus on this uh, because I wasn't, first of all, entirely sure how long it would take uh, uh, to uh, consider these two approaches. Um, and also, I wanted to keep the focus uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so the rest of the time, uh, either we can, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you if any of you have any concerns, questions, or suggestions. Um, if not, um, I think I think we can, we can end the meeting uh, once once we're all uh, you know there are no more concerns left well i wanted to talk a little bit about the, the next steps so so once mm -hmm. we have a once we have a cap provisionally approved and we're mm -hmm. able to use the repos um and so we're, we're writing the code mm -hmm. maybe you guys have talked about this before and i just wasn't there but do we have a plan to like have a an open source reference implementation mm -hmm. and any kind of testing to test conformance and to, to develop that in parallel with the, the code itself so that we can ensure quality and no regressions as we go. What do you mean by uh, open so, you know, the reference implementation? Uh, well, I, I'm thinking of some sort of, you know, um, functional tests or mm -hmm. something more than unit tests that you can run on every commit to make sure you didn't break something. And that sort of implies that there's a reference cozy implement like so for CSI we had the CSI host path driver in Kubernetes right mm -hmm. and that's just like an open source really dumb driver but it implements the standard and so you can make changes and say well did it break no okay it's a good change or at least it's not a horrible change mm -hmm. um, you know <clears throat> or is there a plan to to have something like the CSI host path driver the uh, cozy I'm, I'm driver, right I'm glad you brought that up actually. Um, so, so, uh, so first of all, we have Krish on the call. Uh, Krish uh, is, uh, uh, has been contributing to the testing and he started mocking the uh, driver itself. Uh, but, but to do it more functionally, it might be, uh, you know, Minio uh, is, you can set it up on prem. It's, it's a very simple tool to set up. Um, and, uh, you know, it's S3 compatible in terms of create buckets and, assigning roles and, and credentials, et cetera. Uh, it only supports the S3 API, it's not just compatible. Um, and, and you know you can switch over the uh, AWS S3 client with Minio client and vice versa, and it just works out of the box. Um, disclaimer, I work for Minio, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that would be a good start for uh, writing functional tests where we, we deploy uh, you know, single node Minio and uh, write our tests against it. Um, Are there so, any uh, licensing concerns or is it available for free? It's Apache V2, so. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. That seems like a solid option. Yeah. Is there also an option to to put um, in the repo maybe a folder where we can uh, put more examples uh, for for how you know starters uh, starter drivers like that? Yes. So uh, and, then, mean and then maybe run it like um, through some like have the CI run all these examples. That would be like a very nice coverage way. Oh, interesting. So yeah, we should follow the the model that we did for CSI, right? Where there is a set of end-to-end -end tests that we have, and then we allow the ability to swap out the driver. And so the same set of tests can be run against multiple drivers. So where would I find that repo? Uh, that is a good question. Um, Patrick Foley is working on that, right? That's the one. Yeah, Patrick and Michelle are working on it. I think it's already out, as I understand it. Uh, uh, you're looking for the yeah, I know test or the CSI test? CSI test, and there is a there is a repo under uh, Kubernetes of CSI. Are you looking for that one? Yeah, I think that's the one. CSI test. Yeah, CSI dash test. CSI dash test. Dash test, not API. Uh, I didn't see a CSI. Kubernetes. Test. It's under Kubernetes CSI, not, not a Kubernetes. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, got it. So that has sanity tests and more driver. Um, but in addition to that, there is a set of end-to-end -end tests that yeah. you can use for Kubernetes, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's entry. That is. That's uh, entry. Yeah, that is in Kubernetes, under Kubernetes. Okay. But yeah, but this one is for if you want to write a mock driver. Is here. Yeah, the way that those Kubernetes end-to-end -end tests are designed is that you can pull those out and kind of run them independently against a specific CSI driver. And we, we do exactly that for, for testing. So I think that's a good model to follow. Got um, it. And it, it looks like it's under Kubernetes, Kubernetes E2E. Okay, Kubernetes E2E. And then there's storage subdirectory, and then I guess test patterns and test suites. Let me just think inside Kubernetes, you said. Like in oh, the, I see. The, oh, okay. Okay, got it. In, in the E2E if somewhere inside. Yeah, yeah. So, so like the, the EDE test test not only the CSI driver, but also the Kubernetes bits, the sidecars, everything. everything. Yeah. The, the CSI sanity tests exercise a driver without the sidecars. Right. Um, and we should do both. Yeah. And that, that's that a good has point. use. And, mm -hmm. and, and the mock, the mock driver, I don't know how much value that has other than like for unit testing the, the tests themselves or, or, I don't know, like yeah, unit, unit uh, mock drivers unit. make sense for like a unit test, mm -hmm. but like you, you need a functional test that actually like does the thing that you're supposed to do. But I think mock and, and driver, you can also, you can mock certain conditions. You want some error to happen. You can do something in that mock driver to simulate something, so. Yeah, I think the uh, host path driver has really ended up becoming our mock driver for CSI. And uh, the way that it tends to work is whenever a new piece of functionality is introduced for CSI, someone goes and creates a mock function in that host path driver. And then, uh, and then we use that for end-to-end -end testing because the host path driver can run anywhere. Yeah, the host right. path driver is actually like a real driver. Um, yeah, it's the, able to pass functional tests. Yeah, but I think the yeah. mock driver is more under the... The, oh, you're talking the, about the CSI sanity mock driver. Yeah, yeah. That one is more like you can actually simulate some conditions to test your controller. Yeah. So, yeah. So it sounds like there's kind of three levels of uh, testing we can have here. One is a, uh, a mock driver mm -hmm. uh, and the CSI sanity test similar to that, which mm -hmm. is basically unit tests that you can run on the driver itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second level is to have kind of a dummy driver that you can use uh, for uh, kind of integration testing. And whenever you add a new feature, you extend that dummy driver. And then the third level, I guess, is full end-to-end -end tests, which allow, allow you to swap out the driver. Um, 
and okay. uh, and all three of these kind of exist within Kubernetes and CSI, so you can just follow the existing models. Okay. Um, tests uh, and then like integration tests with the yeah the basically uh, unit integration and end to end. Yeah. For unit tests, uh, there's you can have a set of unit tests plus a mock driver. For integration, you can have a uh, a dummy driver. And for end-to-end -end tests, you can have a set of tests that allow you to swap out the driver. Got it. Wait. So. Okay. So uh, as I understand it, we don't actually have a set of integration tests. We just have a dummy driver mm -hmm. that right. can be used by the end-to-end -end tests. Got it. Okay. For CSI, the, the CSI Sanity can run against any driver. Right. That's the and unit it, tests at the bottom. And it, 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 Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think about it that way. Like it, it actually exercises the driver and like performs a little bit of IO and, you know, right. if, if, if your driver doesn't actually work, you can't pass the tests, which is good. So maybe let's break uh, apart that item, the unit test plus mock driver into two separate. Uh, so okay. it's unit tests against arbitrary driver and a mock, mock driver for unit tests. Is this what you said? Unit test uh, no, mock... just a just a mock driver for unit tests. And an arbitrary driver. Unit tests against arbitrary and mock driver, right? Or just mock driver? Uh, against arbitrary and mock, yeah. Okay, that's what I have. Okay, perfect. And then you got your end to end tests, uh, and the end to end tests are against an arbitrary driver. Or uh, against the dummy driver. Well, the end to end tests shouldn't be able to work with the dummy driver. So this should the, be against, uh, well. The, the reference driver, the. Like a real driver, like host path driver. So yeah, yeah a host path driver. Data. That's what I'm calling the dummy driver. Oh, okay. So yeah, but, but mock that's not driver. A dummy. That's yeah, what do we want to call that? Call it the reference driver. driver or the I like the sample driver, driver, I think. <laughs> okay, that's fine with me. What did you get? What's sample the... driver? Is that what you guys said? Sample driver. I think we call that sample driver somewhere in our docs. Yeah. Sure, that works for me. I'll put both names in the notes here so people know what I'm talking about. And get rid of dummy driver. So uh, one thing I would change here is end-to-end -end test against uh, sample driver. Uh, change that to arbitrary and sample driver. Got it. And if we want to be super consistent here for the first one, mock driver, you can say mock driver for uh, unit tests. Perfect. All right, that looks good to me. All right, uh, I'm going to write this as alpha. Um, is, is all of this needed for alpha, now that I think about it? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the sooner you get some sort of automated testing on, you know, integrated with the Git repo, the sooner you can prevent re idiotic regressions right. um, from creeping in. Yeah, of course you don't need you don't need all of it, but you, you yeah, know. I think E2E is not required for up. I mean, it's good to have. You can have everything. Of course, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. But at least you need to have some unit tests and have some you know, mock drivers. Uh, yeah, sample drivers also good to have. Yeah, I think for alpha, what we might want to do is get the frameworks down and maybe one or two tests and then just continuously add tests. The hardest part, honestly, is getting the framework there. But yeah, it's exactly like Ben said, it'll 
the sooner we can get more tests in, the better for us long term. Yeah, that's that's true. Let's aim to have E2E for this. Um, I think Srini here has actually worked on this before, right, Srini? You've uh, set up the test in prep for a for a different uh, a project in Kubernetes. Yeah, well, uh, I did uh, add jobs, but um, are we going? To integrate with the test and cross EI uh, at some point in time, right? I would think so. Yep, that would be the hope. Yeah. I can okay. help with that. Perfect. Okay. And uh, Chris is also available to uh, help you with that. So we can we can get started on that quickly. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other concerns we want to talk about? So at this point, we can start prepping the repos to to allow code in, right? I mean, at least before the cap merges, like things like you know um, um, the template files and all those things that are required. So what template files? Like there is a lot of uh, this um, um, automatic build file stuff and oh, I see. Stuff like that, I can do that if. That is, I can that'll be good. Yeah. Bars. At least we don't uh, wait for the cap to be merged, but we can start pushing out generic PRs with without code. Right. Right. Okay. okay. So yeah, what's needed for that? We obviously need a CI. Yeah. And uh, uh, on the pull request, uh, you know, when, whenever there's a new pull request, um, sorry, no, whenever there's a new issue. Uh, generally, there's a, there's a template that's there. I don't know. If, yeah, we should have that. Uh, many a times, people may not ask us uh, uh, questions, giving us all the information we need. Uh, we should have that, and uh, maybe even um, create whatever label. Okay, we already have the labels and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I would suggest reaching out to uh, um, kind of Kubernetes org folks and mm -hmm. making sure that we align with whatever the larger community is doing as much as possible with these things. Got it, got it. Okay, um, all right. So we can get started on that and, and we will, um, yeah, we'll start making progress on that and, and next week, uh, you know, we'll know where we're at. In the meantime, um, uh, you know, please take some time to review the cap. Uh, we've brought it to a level, we've brought it to the extent where it's, uh, uh, it, I think every comment has been addressed. Um, so please uh, uh, go over them and, and if you have any other concerns, bring them up. And uh, uh, like I said earlier, if, uh, if you can uh, review uh, even just the parts uh, that are most relevant or interesting to you, uh, that will contribute to the overall review of the cap. Um, and and we would have covered uh, all the different parts that way. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, that's it, that's it from me. Oh, so you may want to take a look over the CSI release tools, just to see how um, uh, yeah the CSI yeah. projects are setting up the CIs. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So it's in Kubernetes CSI, and uh, what am yeah. I looking for? So release tools. CSI release tools. Yeah, search for release. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Yeah, and Patrick is most familiar with this. Michelle as well. Okay. Okay. Patrick. Okay. Michelle. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll follow something similar to this. We'll look at how this works and and go from there. Does that is is that the uh, intention? Uh, uh, Zheng, is that how we want to take it? Just uh, sorry, what? Start from here and then. yeah. Yeah, this is okay. um, this one is for you to if you want to set up the, you need to set for up you. CI right. So so you can take a look how this is set up for Kubernetes CSI. Okay, okay. Something similar. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. All right. Um, yeah, that's it from me. We will we will take you know go back and you know use the resources that you've shared with us today and you know we'll get started on this uh, this administrative tasks of uh, setting up repos and and uh, um, uh, templates for the issues and stuff and and we'll go from there 
in the meantime okay. I'll, I'll look forward to your reviews and and yeah we'll respond to that uh, simultaneously in parallel all right uh, one more thing I had is whoever owns github.com slash container dash object storage mm -hmm. interface. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, update that to start pointing to the new Kubernetes repos and kind of say this is deprecated, don't use it? Yep. Cool. Sure. Yeah. How do we get the new repos? Is there a formal request made? It's already there. They're already set up. Yeah. There. We're just using what's there. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And maybe archive the existing um, repos that are underneath that org just to make sure people don't get confused. So real quick action items I have are the build files, the CI, create a template for PRs and issues, make sure we align with the larger community, have everyone review the cap and deprecate the old repository in addition to the unit test. Sounds good to me. Okay, perfect. Those are at the very bottom of the notes for today. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah, I'll archive the repos and we can move from there. Cool. All right. Um, do we have time? Okay. Oh, we're almost done with the R. Um, all right. I will, I will uh, talk to you all on Monday for the engineering update. Uh, we, we've been writing quite a bit of code and, and uh, some, some new questions have come up. So it'll be good to go over them on Monday and go from there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye.